This is Robin Hood to the rescue and we're going to re uh, restore an Akeosho 1970 Japanese clock. It isn't too old, I don't think this is a 1970s uh, clock, but the cool thing about it is it's a 30-day clock, so um, it makes it a little more collectible. And, um, so I think all the parts are there. That's kind of nice, so this, this part goes here. There's a lot of uh, broken pieces. There's a horse motif on the top. My, my friend loves horses, so I'm sure that's why she liked this clock. So the horse motif was uh, re-glued together. So this is a better view of how that spring bends over that pin that, that I don't like. I don't think that's right. I think this, this lever was kind of bent out, and so it wasn't dropping off very well. That was a nice drop. That's exactly the way it should work. So I do see a problem. I, I mean, because I, I, I commonly find them. So this... This lever here, there's a pivot right underneath here, and that pivot is actually hitting that lever a little bit. The final cleaning process, I use a um, precision cleaner. It'll strike one time on each half hour. There we go. So this is Mark Brewer as Robin Hood to the rescue, and you can reach me at watertrails one at gmail.com. I'm going to glue the horse back together. I'm going to use JB Weld for that. It's a two-part epoxy. I'll let that sit. You know, I'll let it sit 30 minutes or so just to make sure it's all set. And we'll see how it does. All right, so that looks good. Um, I live in Florida, so it's not unusual to have a little rust on this, it's, but it, it actually looks pretty good. You see a little little surface rust on that spring, and it's probably only on the first first wind. A little on that one. Everything has got bluing on it that's not brass. The bluing all looks pretty good. Surprised there's not a maker on this clock see is I, I believe this is assembled wrong um, this spring the spring should go under this pin here so this is a better view of how that spring bends over that pin that, that I don't like I don't think that's right I think the spring goes under the pin all right, so we're gonna move, remove the face plate parts first. I really like this little awl for, for taking out these circlips. Oh, that's 
where the friction clutch is for the power. They're all in different places. So this is a star cam. So um, in this case, it only has two, two cams on it. Uh, so this is kind of what I call the brain of the clock. One, one is shorter for the 30 minute and the other is taller. Everything is timed off, off of this, um, which is on the, the minute arbor. The first cleaning of the gears and the pivots is like this. I just try to wipe everything down. I look to see if there's anything, any debris in the gears. These are really clean. Uh, th there is a little bit down in here. I'm gonna demonstrate how I polish the pivots. There we go. Like that. I'm just gonna hit them with 2000 grit sandpaper. I just have it like this. And so to, to do that, all we do is turn it on. I don't let it go too fast. And we're gonna just polish it with that very fine sandpaper. So I'm gonna do this to all the other wheels off camera. The final cleaning process, I use a um, precision cleaner. This is an ultrasonic cleaner. It actually has, a, it's, it's heated. All right, so let's turn the ultrasonic cleaner on. We're just gonna let it run five minutes. Now it's time to reassemble. Now let's oil this guy. So I have this set up on the test stand and it's looking good. I'm just gonna let it run a couple hours. So I do see a problem. I, I mean, because I, I, I commonly find them, so this, this lever here, there's a pivot right underneath here, and that pivot is actually hitting that lever a little bit. And, and the, that's the best way is to put a spacer in, to put a spacer right underneath here where the pivot is. So we'll make one of those. So the bushing we need to make, I just drew a little sketch of it. It's like 60 thousandths is the, the thickness of that bushing. That's the most important measurement. And I can have a hundred thousandths hole in it and it's going to be about two hundred thousandths uh, diameter. So I have some spare brass stock that I use and so we're gonna we're gonna make it out of that. Just clamp it in there. So we're gonna drill a ninety-six thousandths hole in this. This will be the so this will be the bushing we're making out of this piece right here. There we go. That cut pretty nice, didn't it? So there's the new spacer that I cut, the new bushing. It's just touch it, it's in the plate between the plate and the gear. I don't really like the way that lever is bent right there at the end. It's not bent at a right angle. It, it, it comes off of this, this, this uh, you call it a star cam, even though there's only two, two, two uh, lobes on it. It should come off square. I don't like that, so I'm gonna make it right. Around. So what was happening is this this lever was kind of bent out, and so it wasn't dropping off very well. Um, so in a minute we're going to see how that works, and it should drop off a lot better now. Should just have a nice. There it goes. See that drop? That was a nice drop. Time to reassemble the clock.
Let's see how the glue up of the horse came out. All right. I like it. Now we're going to test to see how the strike works. The first strike is going to be on the 30 minutes, which is one strike. There we go. And then it'll strike. We're coming up on four, so it'll strike four times, meaning it's four o'clock. The clock is completed now. You can see this is a nice photo of it hanging on the wall. It's really beautiful. Um, it, it works uh, really good now, uh, and it looks really good. So this is Mark Brewer as Robin Hood to the rescue, and you can reach me at watertrails01 at gmail.com.